Hello, everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, yeah, so I wanted to do a live. Sorry, I honestly <laughs> was napping for like 15 minutes because I am so tired. Um, so I wanted to do a live to celebrate the Service Dog 101 course coming out. I basically worked on that course for <laughs> several months, and I so appreciate all of you who purchased the course during the pre-sale because it allowed me to really focus on getting this course out. Uh, if you haven't checked out the course, I'm going to put the link, ah, sorry, uh, the link to the course in the chat. I should probably introduce myself if you guys uh, aren't, haven't been at the channel for a long time. Uh, I'm Laura DeMeo Roy, as you hear on every video, and I'm from Doggy U. Uh, <laughs> so a um, little background on myself. I've been a service dog trainer for my entire career. I started in guide dogs. I've worked guide dogs for um, about uh, like nine or so years altogether in some form. So I went from, I guess, really more if you count the volunteering I did, uh, <laughs> I worked guide dogs and placed them all over the country. And then I also moved into doing other types of service dogs. So psych service dogs, um, some mobility dogs, ASD, um, are generally my, the types of dogs that I do. I've worked with some clients with pots, um, you know, a bunch of different stuff. And so, yeah, I've done guide dogs all the time. <laughs> um, so I wanted to make a course that would really, the course that I wanted to give people before they started their journey. So it's like the course that's going to tell you like, what are the laws? How do I know how to navigate the laws within the U.S.? Because there are three of them that really apply. How they apply to different situations. Um, how to deal with people. Because <laughs> when you're doing service dogs, you're going to be dealing with people all the time. I was just uh, out on a video shoot and just constant people chatting, even while there's cameras in your face kind of thing. They want to chat with you. So how to deal with those situations, how to deal with when you're denied access, how to pick a dog, how to assess your own dog. I even have a bonus webinar on my service dog 101 course. That's a 45 minute look at me doing a service dog puppy test uh, to see how the dog is um, and whether or not I would recommend this puppy as a service dog. So if that all interests you, um, the course is on pre-sale until the end of the day. So it's $97 right now. It's going to be uh, 149 tomorrow, which will be the regular price. Um, but I wanted to give a discount for all of you that helped support me through the making of that course. So I appreciate you all that did that. Um, so currently um, I am focused completely on education. I make four videos or so a month for service dog slash pet dog stuff as well as another two to four a month for Patreon. So thank you to my Patreon members. Um, there's 700 or something of you. Um, it's, I purposely made, it's only $3 a month to join when that gets you access to all of my private stuff. Um, so all my private videos, my live Q and A every month. Um, and then there's different tiers that also has like a deep dive, which today I did a deep dive for those uh, inner circle and elite members. Any hoops, that's my stuff. Um, so I'm going to open it for questions. There was a question on here before it started and now it's not here. So I, but it was about going to the bathroom, teaching your dog to go to the bathroom. So I'm going to start with that one. I'm not going to get it totally right. Cause I thought I was going to be able to read it off of the chat. Um, but I'm going to talk about that, but first, um, go over to the chat and just let me know where you're coming from, where you are in your service dog journey. So I can, um, you know, kind of get an idea of who's here, um, maybe how long you've been following along with Doggy U, so I can get kind of an idea of, of who's hanging out today. Um, so while you're doing that, let's talk about bathroom stuff. So it was a person that had a question about using um, their dog won't go to the bathroom outside of their regular um, area. So like they'll go to the bathroom like on cue at home, but they're not going to the bathroom when they're out and about. When we have a dog and then we're dealing with any bathroom stuff, because like service dogs, I want them to be able to go on cue anywhere on leash. Um, so with that, I want them, 
what the way that I deal with that, sorry, I am totally incapable of reading the things on the side and talking at the same time. Okay, let me focus on this part and then I will read all the things on the side. Uh, so if I have a bathroom issue, I pretend that I'm going back to square one with bathroom stuff. So I'm pretending that I'm having a puppy that I'm trying to train at home. With that, if I know, you know, I need to get the dog to go to the bathroom in a specific location or on a specific substrate, like gravel or pavement or whatever, um, then I'm going back to like potty training 101. And that means that I am going to take the time when I, I know it is most likely that my dog has to go to the bathroom. I am going to bring them to the location that I needed them to go to the bathroom. And that's in the morning. After your dog has slept all night, they likely need to go to the bathroom. So for this particular person who needs them to go to the bathroom, not at their house, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and this is a pain in the butt, like no training is like magical, quick fix type of stuff. Like all of it is work, right? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I am going to get my dog in the car in the morning, put them in the car before they go to the bathroom. And I'm going to drive them two minutes from home, take them out, give them their, how much leash I let them, you know, go to the bathroom on. Typically for me, that would be a six foot leash. Give them their busy cue. If they don't go to the bathroom, I put them back in the crate. I wait 15 minutes. I bring them back out. I do it again until they go. Uh, I recommend doing that on a weekend when you're not working. If you don't work weekends or whatever day you're not working to practice because you're going to be hanging out for a while if your dog doesn't go immediately. Um, so that's kind of how I'd handle that problem or any problem like that is a result of needing to go to the bathroom. But first I'd make sure that my bathroom is on cue. Cool. All right. Let me just read some of those, com these comments over here. Cause they're coming in fast and furious. Do, 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 do. Um, uh, the question about vibrating collars. I don't use vibrating collars. Um, generally, unless the dog is deaf, um, as a lot of dogs are find the vibrating super averse and, um, they don't really like it. Um, so that's not my, in my wheelhouse. Uh, my hands aren't capable of holding leech much anymore. Um, so for leash stuff, if you don't, if you're not able to hold a leash, I would recommend a waist leash, um, or an over the shoulder leash. There's actually, uh, if you check out my service dog 101 course, there is actually some equipment recommendations for, uh, people who need to use both hands or don't have a lot of, um, strength in their hands, which is a couple different leash varieties that you might be able to use. Uh, Tucson. Yeah. I'm imagining it's hot. It is miserably raining outside today here in Connecticut. Hi from Florida. Um, all right. Do you have something on how to get my service dog to go under my head when having a seizure? I'm in, I'm in the Adirondacks of New York. No real trainer. Sir. I don't, but I have trained it, um, for under the legs for pots. Um, I want to do a video on that. I don't have a good dog for that right now, but it is going to be when I get my new puppy, you know, obviously it's not going to be the first thing I teach a Bushby puppy, but it will be in there. I will describe really quickly the general protocol that I use. First, I teach the dog in a standing position to put their head. Um, I, so I should say this, when I started training service dogs, there was almost no available education. Everything was a secret. You know, this is 14, 15 years ago when everything was like a closely held program secret. So I had to develop kind of my own ways of training things and see what worked. I was a very heavy into trick training, so that was helpful. Um, but when I'm training a dog to put themselves under anything, um, I start with actually teaching them to put their head between the couch pillow and the couch. And I start with holding the couch up, throwing a treat under there and marking and rewarding them. They put their head in until they will shove their head um, into the couch. And then I start working backwards from there with um, feet on the floor. So hopefully that gives you a starting point. Uh, let's see, hi from Canada, Ontario, Oregon. Oh, with a 13 week old golden, nice, very nice. And a three-year-old mini Aussie dropout. Doo, doo, doo. All right, can you talk about boys lifting their leg to pee? Is it possible to prevent it? Can you train them to do it only when they're off duty? Is it ethical to train them not to do it? It's definitely ethical to train them um, not to go to the bathroom while they're working, for sure. So I have dealt with this in guide dogs quite a bit, actually. Um, the way that I do it is I am very clear about, for this is specifically for dogs. So this is an interesting question because I'm actually working on a video right now um, with the little poodle that you've seen on a lot of my videos on some bus training. And one of the things I mentioned in the video is I let her go to the bathroom in vest because she doesn't have any bathroom issues. But if I have a bathroom issue with a dog, um, especially a male, especially an intact male, 
I am making sure that when I allow bathroom time, it is out of harness and vest. So, and if you don't want them going on, you know, up right surfaces, right? When you need them to go to the bathroom, you need to kind of do what I was talking about with the other person is I'm going to put them on their six foot leash. I'm going to take them to a spot where they can't lift their leg onto a thing to go to the bathroom and reinforce heavily for them going to the bathroom, not lifting their leg. Um, and that may also mean you need to do some retraining with healing. So if you're getting a dog that is healing and peeing at the same time, we need to do some retraining where we start away from objects that they can pee on. And you're going to have to really manufacture that type of thing um, with the dog. Um, and then if you see precursors to peeing, jog, 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 excited, come with me, that kind of thing, um, and reinforce for that. Um, but yes, you definitely can work on it. Uh, and then be very clear about when is bathroom time and when is not bathroom time. Uh, got my first service dog. Nice, Devin. Hey, Della. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Um, you don't know if you got it. I Della, email me if you have a question uh, as to whether or not you got it. You would have to have created a login for Teachable. You should have gotten an email about it, all of that. Um, I'm still in obedience. He is three months. Okay, cool. Uh, 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 uh. Let's see. Uh, hi from Missouri. I'm researching. So when the time comes, I can train my own pets, some tasks to help with my disability. Awesome. Yeah. And Anna, Service Dog 101 is really set up for someone who is at the start of their journey. It's also really good if you're a trainer that's doing pet dogs and interested in going uh, into the service dog realm of things. Um, cause it's going to give you a really good overview of everything. You know, it's not directed at how to teach clients, but it is all the things about service dogs and dealing with service dogs. Um, but yeah, it's awesome that you're doing research. It also includes, um, a self-assessment to look at your personal dog and see if they might be good for public access or not. Um, is it a problem to let your male puppy hump pillows and stuff? Uh, will he outgrow it or do, do I need to stop him? So yeah, so it really depends on how old your dog is, I don't think it's a problem to require or to allow him to have a pill that they hump sometimes. Um, but it's a symptom of something else, right? So if your dog is over aroused, I would think about how can I teach him an appropriate way to deal with those emotions and or not put him in situations where he is super overexcited. Um, so it's only a problem if it's a problem, but it's probably something that I would interrupt and offer another solution for. Um, how do I train my dog if I can't bend down? So this person, uh, Brandis, I hope I'm saying that right. I have a lower back issue. How do I train my dog if I cannot bend down? Common thing. You're not the only one. Lots of different solutions to this problem. One of my favorites is literally reinforcement on a stick. So I teach first, I teach targets. So teach, touching a flag so that if I want to move my dog around, I can do it with a touch behavior. So I get my little flag, like, you know, imagine there's like a flag in this stick. I teach my dog to touch it. Now that I've reinforced touching it, I can move them around. You can do a lot of shaping um, where you throw the food. You can use a food robot. So an electric thing that food comes out of when you press a button. That's a really great way to have a place, an easy way to reinforce. And you can use a wooden spoon. So my favorite way to teach like loose leash walking stuff where I can't, you know, if you don't want to bend down or you can't bend down is I slather some peanut butter or whatever else the dog likes, yogurt on the spoon. My spoon comes up to my um, chest and then I go down and re so I mark and then go down and reinforce with a lick from the spoon. I actually have a video. If you look um, on my library of free videos, there's a reinforcement video that shows that. So how to use reinforcers or something like that. Um, so there's a lot of different solutions for that. It makes it slightly harder and also totally you can come up with what works best for you and your dog. Uh, Brianna, service dog, 14 years old, mostly retired, except at home and a four month old SDIT in Texas. Awesome. Uh, just got my prospect puppy three weeks ago. Awesome. Glad you're here. Um, thanks. It does help. I trained her to go under chairs. Great for appointments. So that might help start. Yeah. Uh, when I do socialization, my puppy prospect stares at people and things he is curious in, still stays near. However, sometimes he, if something scares him, he tries to bolt. What can I do to help? I'd want to know what, that's a little bit more challenging. So some of these questions, right, are very nuanced and you need an in-person trainer or someone who's going to review video for 
um, to give you the right solution to the problem that you're having because, you know, dog training is nuanced. It's both an art and a science. So basically I would be thinking about what I would be making a log of things that have made my puppy nervous, seeing if I'm overfacing them. So making sure I'm not putting them in situations where they're getting repeatedly exposed to things that are going to make them uncomfortable. And then start with, say, they're getting nervy about traffic, right? So really good example, Cool Whip, when she was a baby, um, she was very nervous about cars, um, extremely nervous. So we spent a lot of time watching cars, but we started watching cars from like hundreds of yards away. And I would bring a Kong with me or a bone or something for her to chew on. And um, basically if she wasn't able, like if she stopped chewing the bone, then I knew we were too close for her to be comfortable, right? So if she like looks up and looks at the cars, that's not a big deal. But if she's like, hey, I can't chew on this really good bone because it is, I am too close to the thing that is scary, then I would retreat and move backwards. And as time went on, we got closer and closer to the cars. It is not a quick fix, but it is a, you know, something that you can work with, with your particular dog. Um, and then, you know, the other thing that a lot of people do with their young dogs is they put them in situations that they're not ready for. So, and I'm not saying that that is what you're doing, uh, stars and jars. I'm just something that I see across the industry is because people are watching Instagram and people's highlight reels and all of that all the time, you know, they're bringing dogs to like Disney for like <laughs> four months old for hours on it. That's not appropriate for a young dog. You know, we want to make sure to give them short bits of socialization experiences at the level that they're telling us that is appropriate for them. So something to think about. Uh, do. Uh, oh, thank you for answering your question. You're welcome. Um, super. Does this go into multiple tasks training? Um, no. So Jacqueline, um, you asked the question, does this, this service dog 101 go into multiple task training? Absolutely not. This is not a training. And if you go to the website, it does say that very explicitly. This is not a dog training course. This is not, if you're looking how to train a particular task, this is not that course. This course is for the person that is looking to better understand how to go through life with a service dog, what the phases of having a service dog are from puppyhood to adulthood, um, you know, how to interact with your family, let them know you're getting a service dog, that kind of thing. Um, I will have training courses out next year. Um, I'll be starting with that. However, um, it, this is not a how to train your dog course. This is a basically human training course on how to navigate the world with a service dog. So um, just to be super clear. Um, okay. I'm new to my area and people know uh, I know don't have dogs. How can I dog socialize my prospect without going to dog parks or daycare? Well, you can go to dog parks. So here's, so, you know, a lot of people don't have dog resources and they think that socializing a dog includes, um, you know, just meeting every dog that they see. But my socialization for dogs means meeting some very nice dogs um, that are very well picked out for my dog and spending a lot of time watching other dogs. So I will go to the dog park, but I will stand 50 yards away and let my dog just watch those dogs, reinforce the dog for looking at me, um, all that. Now, I do recommend getting into a puppy class um, because a lot of puppy classes involve, if you're looking for some one-on-one -on -one play time for your dog, um, a lot of times that is very much um, monitored by the person, the trainer who understands dog body language a little bit better is able to make sure that your dog isn't getting bullied or isn't practicing bullied, bullying others. So highly recommend you getting into a socialization class. Um, but for actually socialization, socialization is much more than seeing uh, uh, just dogs or meeting dogs. It is watching that dogs exist, watching that people exist of all types, all sizes, children, old or people, all of that. Um, so Anyways, that, that's kind of a, the short answer. Socialization is such a huge, I could do a whole course just in socialization. Um, let's see, I've been a service dog handler for six years, but I noticed that you can get CEUs from the course and that's really awesome to me. Yeah, so I did, this was my, obviously my first course and I applied uh, through CPDTKA, which is one of the certifications that I hold and it will give you four CEUs for this course. Um, when I'm talking about the course, it is 11 sections, of course, and 
it, each one covers a different topic related to service dogs. If you go to um, the link that I put down, um, since a bunch of new people are on, I'll just drop it again. You can go down to the bottom and you'll be able to see all of the different sections of the course. Um, but yeah, it's about, depending on how, like there's video portions, there's videos and slide portions, and then there's reading portions. And the whole thing should take you anywhere between like four and a half, five hours to like seven-ish hours or so. It's it's quite a bit of content. Um but it's all curated, you know, instead of having to hunt and pack around the internet, like that's part of the reason I made this course is like, you know, you can get a lot of free resources online. I provide a lot of free resources, right? Um, but if you don't want to like take tidbits from everywhere, you can find all the information that you need in one place. And that's what this course is. Um, mm -mm -mm. Awesome. Good, Brandis. Brandis. Oh, no, no, I'm, I don't know if I'm saying it right again. Uh, okay. Um, Let's see, walking my Roddy off leash along a main street, she is doing great. But if a cat comes along, she has the urge. I wouldn't be walking it off leash then. That would be, I'm not walking my dog off leash anywhere near a main street because they are ultimately dogs and I don't need mine getting run over by a car. So uh, yeah, that would be a hard, hard pass for me on that. Um, I am very conservative as far as the safety of my dog goes. Uh, I'm getting a Bernadoodle puppy. Is there any type of training I should focus on in the beginning? Yes. Um, so I talk about this a lot in service dog 101 when I'm talking about the phases of life for your puppy, but when you're talking about training a puppy, everyone wants to get the skills really fast. And I get it because look, if you watch my videos, if you watch me bringing home Osa, that German shepherd puppy, um, you know, I'm doing a ton. She's got a ton of behaviors, right. That she knows. And also that is not my focus. My focus when a puppy is young is on two things, socialization, because their socialization window closes somewhere between 12 weeks and 16 weeks, their primary socialization window. Um, and introducing a love of learning. So my goal is not to teach my dog to sit, it's to, my, to teach my dog to love working with me. So what does that look like? Games, um, you know, a lot of using food for like, different, like, yes, I'm going to reward sits. And also I'm going to get super excited and play and, you know, really getting my dog to engage in love learning and then introducing types of training. Um, if you haven't taken my free course, um, I have a free, uh, mini course right now also available where I, it's like a 45 minute course or so that just talks about the different types of training that we do in positive reinforcement training. And one of them, um, we do, Luring, shaping, capturing. Um, and if you're not familiar with shaping and capturing, these are the things that I'm going to work on with my puppy really young because I care most about concept training so that I can use those skills forever with the dog. Shaping is a big one. In service dog training, there is a lot of stuff that you can't just lure. You need to shape it. So shaping, really, really a big one that I'm focusing on with a young dog, along with potty training because nobody likes a dog that goes to the bathroom in their house. Um, do, do, do. Uh, any advice on training big dogs who don't know their size to be gentle? Uh, is it more of a temperament thing? Yeah, maybe. Uh, it's a real, yes, it does depend on the dog. Um, oh my gosh, oh, I lost stuff. Um, but things that we can think about would be teaching them body awareness. So teaching them how to, basically teaching them how to use their body can be really helpful in um, you know, working with larger dogs. So doing things like teaching a hind foot target, front foot target, how to move their hind in, independently, cavalettis, all of that type of stuff will be helpful with a larger dog who doesn't know how big they are. Also helpful in teaching them to, you know, talk and all of that. Um, so you asked about the full price of the course. So the full price of the course after today, so after this pre-sale will be $149. Um, right now it is on pre-sale for $97. So under a hundred bucks. Um, do, 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 do. do you go into which breed is best for service dog training? I, I a hundred percent do. Um, uh, I will say I am not the most experienced person with large breeds. Like you're saying you want a hundred and, oh, you don't want a 150 pound dog. Yeah. I would not, I, dog Dave Bordeaux would not be one of the dogs that I would choose for, um, training at all. But yes, I do go into the breeds that I choose for training. Um, and also how to evaluate individual temperaments, how, what to look for in a breeder. Um, yeah, I mean, Jackie, my go-to is always Labradors, uh, you know, a large, um, Labrador is well-bred generally is, 
one of the better choices for service dogs um, for, you know, if you need some mobility assistance. So, um, but I don't know you, you know, specifically or your situation, but in general, you're always going to hear me say lab first because they just have temperaments that are the easiest to train. So, um, for service dog 101, is this mainly geared to puppies, service dogs in training, or can this be used to refresh your polish skills? Yeah, sorry, Nadine, I, I did cover this um, a bit, but just to reiterate, this is not a training course. So service dog 101 is a training the human course and not how to train a dog course. So if you check out the link, um, you'll see the entire curriculum down at the bottom. Um, I will be having how to train, you know, courses in the future. Um, but this one is much more geared towards how to navigate the world with a service dog versus how to specifically train a service dog. Though there are some little bits of training stuff in there, um, just as the nature of things. Um, I'm currently in a puppy class and literally the class only has three golden doodles. He's the only Dalmatian and the youngest. Um, yeah, so you might have to get creative. Um, look for service dog meetups, look for breed meetups at like meetup.com or on Facebook or your local area. Um, Hi, I know the norm is to have one service dog, but I'm currently training two at the same time due to multiple health issues. Have you ever had experience team training? I d have not, um, you know, totally legal to do that. The situations in which I've seen it work best is one smaller dog for like scent-based training and one larger dog for certain um, other types of issues that you might have. Um, but I would not say dual training service dogs is my specialty just because handling one dog in and of itself for most people is enough work for them um, to be able to manage. So uh, advice for training my Morky to be a service dog for my tics, PTSD, anxiety, and other things. Yeah, actually. So if you're Casey, uh, Casey Marie, if you're on my Patreon page, there are a lot of videos on how to teach blocking, how to start doing um, a nose boop for alerting behavior. And I'm actually in the process right now of starting an entire training um, course. So my next course is likely going to be one on training behavior interruptions and alerts. So how to train a nose boop interruption to interrupt um, behavior or bring attention to a certain behavior. So that Stay tuned for that. But also if you're on Patreon, some of that stuff is over there already. Um, my service dog prospect is nine weeks old. What do you recommend we start on and how do I build them on? Hey, Devin, I just talked about that with the last one. I'm not sure if you popped on for that, but, um, you know, rewatch the beginning of this one because I talked quite a bit about um, how I would want to basically build uh, excitement for learning. So, uh, and also check out my video if you look on YouTube and put in doggy you, um, service dog puppy, uh, a video that will come up that talks about how, what I'm doing when I first get my puppy old. It's actually like what I do at eight weeks with a new puppy or something like that. Um, hi from New Jersey. Oh, you're close to me. Uh, how would you handle friends and family not understanding the importance of public access or objecting to, up to me feeling the need to bring my PTSD service dog with me ever? Yeah. So I talk about that a little bit in service dog 101. Um, Family dynamics can be really, really challenging, but I think bringing that out in the open is the best way to do it. So first, understanding what they're like, a lot of people just don't understand and have questions. So part of what I did with Service Dog 101 is I wanted you to be educated enough that you can answer the questions that other people are going to ask of you and be comfortable doing that. So the more educated you are about Service Dogs, which I'm not assuming that you're not or anything like that, the better. Um but also sitting them down, talking to them about your needs um, and why and what benefit you're getting from the service dog. If that's the relationship with your family that you have, um, you know, family dynamics are a little bit more challenging. And sometimes working with a therapist on this kind of thing can be, um, you know, also a, a really good option. Um, I also get issues where people are like the family is kind of um, inhibiting the training with the dog. And that's another situation where we want to talk about the rules with whoever lives in your household and also make sure that you are, that your dog is with you most of the time so that they're not getting into um, conflict with the other people in your house. Um, I've had five service dogs. I trained the last one myself and doing the same now. My last was a lab bulldog uh, mix and one is a lab and he's certainly different. Any advice on Labrador specific training? Yeah. Uh, labs are my favorite. <laughs> That's for someone who's trained German Shepherds her whole life. Um, not that I don't like German Shepherds. I just 
like the right lab for service dog training a little bit more. It's just easier for most people to train. Um, Labrador specific training, work on your leave it. If you're on my Patreon, I have a, a video on how to train uh, basically to leave dropped food. And that would be a really good video for you to watch um, because one of the bigger problems you get in with Labradors is they're just much more interested in food and stuff on the floor. And as far as um, other training, I'd be working on engaged, disengaged training. We go over that a lot on Patreon. Um, I'm hoping to do some more videos on that in the future, but um, yeah, look up engage, disengage, or type it into the tag box on Patreon and you should find some info about that game. Cause that's what I would be working quite a bit on. Um, how would you train a dog that is distracted by dogs and isn't food or toy motivated? Um, yeah, so I'd be working on motivation. So I can't train a dog that isn't motivated by things. Um, so, you know, that would be one of the things that I, I work quite a bit on is the act of eating, right? And also that's one of the reasons that I love Labradors for um, training for service dogs is I am looking for when I look for a dog for service dog work, I am looking for a dog that is food motivated because a lot of the work that I do is with food. So I want to start with a dog that enjoys the thing that I am using as a reinforcer. That's just a choice on my part. If I have a dog that isn't motivated by certain things, it is much harder for, to train them as a service dog. So what I would be working on is increasing my toy skills, but really my food eating skills, because the dog is obviously eating if it is alive, right? So how can I increase my dog's excitement around eating food? Can it be that I am tossing food and they have to chase it? Is the food in a ball that they're going after? Um, you know. Do I train specifically train at feeding time so my dog is naturally more hungry? That kind of thing. Um, that could be its own <laughs> video in and of itself. Uh, all right, I'm gonna take a couple more questions uh, before I head out. Um, let me just read over on the side here. So my service dog prospect loves to say hi to strangers, but he's excited, he wants to play with them. I don't let my dog say hi to other people on leash, um, period. Um, yeah, with, hey, cool. Hey, baby girl. <laughs> cool, I wanted to join here. Um, so I, if my dog is off leash in the home with somebody else playing whatever, um, I allow them to, you know, say hi to people. And I practice that quite a bit with, you know, uh, controlled environments, but I don't let my service dog prospects say hi to people out in the field because in real life, they're not going to be able to say hi to people um, as part of their job, so. Um, do, 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 all right. Uh, having trouble understanding the boundary between on and off duty. I have a video on this about, um, well, a little bit. Uh, I have a video on how I use equipment, but basically what I do is I will put the dog on a short leash, flat collar is what I generally work in, but whatever equipment you're working your dog in and a vest, I do some very focused exercises on healing, um, being around me, that kind of thing. Um, and then I take all of that off and give them their free cue. And I do that repeatedly until they understand like, this is time for me to be a dog. This is time for me to engage with my human. Um, as far as other people, that's all about using your words and that I know is hard. And I actually talk quite a bit about this in Service Dog 101 is how do we practice using our words so that we can talk to other people about, um, you know, not petting our service dog or ultimately walking away and saying, hey, I'm sorry, I'm training and walking away. Um, mm -mm. Do, do, do. All right. Uh, do you recommend teaching commands uh, in different languages to avoid annoying people from breaking the dog's focus? Um, I don't. <laughs> uh, I So it, it's totally up to you. If you have a different language that you use, great. That's awesome. I have one cue that is in a different language, but that's because I ran out of English cues <laughs> for it. Um, I don't run into the problem very often that people are giving my dog different cues. Um, so that's not a concern for me, but you, they don't speak English, the dog. So you can, whatever works for you works for you as long as you can be consistent and it comes, um, up to your, you know, it, you can go for it quickly. Um, 
Uh, for a newbie to your Patreon, is there a guide or plan for progressing through? Uh, no, Nadine. So Patreon is kind of more like a, it's almost like a Facebook feed in that it's like a new topic on everything. Um, I do have an entire list of every video that I have, or you can search terms or you can look in collections. So like I have a task training collection where you can see all of the task training stuff, but it's not like a course in that, like, it's like this step first, this step first, this step next. That's why I'm creating courses in the future so that we have a guide for that. Patreon has, it is all about, um, you know, my live Q and A's where you can ask questions on there every month deep dives into particular topics and then training ideas, watching me do some training, like the stuff that I can't post on YouTube because the YouTube algorithm wants short attention grabbing videos. Um, I post over on Patreon so you can see full training sessions, that kind of thing. Um, uh, Della, should I have my prospect before starting this or can I just train me while waiting for the prospect? Absolutely. This is a pre prospect thing. Absolutely. You can definitely start this now. It is designed so that people who don't have a dog yet are going to get all of the information they need. Now it can definitely be for people who already have a dog, but the ideal time to do service dog 101 is even before you pick out a dog. It's got all the information you need to make a good choice about the candidate that you're looking for. Um, uh, let's see, have a plane trip coming up with my service dog and training on the 10th of November, still whines occasionally when passing dogs. Is there anything you suggest? Engage, disengage all day long for the next until you fly uh, kind of thing. Uh, if you're not familiar with engage, disengage, again, check out my Patreon or type engage, disengage into Google. Um, but that would be the game I'd be working on a ton. Um, it is what makes, if you see any of my dogs videos where they're completely ignoring everything, that is the game that makes that happen. Um, do, do, do. Oh yeah. And I also make sure that, so Brianna says, I make sure puppy has got something on that states in training and leash wrap in the way that states SDIT. Um, let's see. Ah, that's hurt. I can't read that whole thing. Um, okay. So I am actually heading out this weekend for a two month long trip, uh, across the country. I'm taking a little bit of, uh, some downtime and a break cause it's been crazy uh, over here. So um, yeah, so I'm going to head out and try and pack my car in the rain for this trip. But I want to thank you all for being here and being part of the Q&A. Um, if you like Q&As and you want more and you have more questions, definitely check out the Patreon. Um, you can find that at patreon.com slash doggyu. Um, and I hope you are interested in the course. Again, today is the last day to purchase the course. And um, on pre-sale and otherwise it'll be normal price as of tomorrow. Um, so thank you all so much for being here and you all have an awesome day. All right. Happy training. <laughs>